meeting to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Uh, I've got a little update for the board on the uh, on the warning and uh, error correction that we made this morning. Okay. Anything else? Anyone um, else? Yeah. Kyle. I have a request um, uh, for putting video links in with our meeting minutes on the website, if that's possible. Okay. Anyone else? Not seeing any. With that, is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of January 18th? No move, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. I guess Nat seconded, right? He did. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Meeting minutes pass. Uh, Rosemary, you've got the floor. And then you got Rosemary. Okay, I don't have too much for tonight. Just uh, the warrant for the board to authorize Eric to sign. What's the board's pleasure? Move that the uh, chairman sign. Got a motion. We got a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Okay. Then we have the for the grand list the. Saying there's no suits or appeals on the grand list for last year that needs a signature. Okay. Anything else? And you guys need to decide if you're going to send ballots to all active registered voters. Does the board have a <clears throat> pleasure on the question of sending ballots to all registered voters? We know the cost, and do we know if we will be reimbursed by the state? Yes, we will be. We should do it. I need a motion. I, okay, I move that we um, send ballots to every registered voter in Johnson. Active voter. Active voter, active voter. I will second that. We have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion? I think if they want a ballot, they can request one. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Okay, we'll do this by roll call. Mike, how do you vote? Nay. Doug, how do you vote? Aye. Kyle, how do you vote? Uh, you were cut off on that. Aye. Aye. Nat, how do you vote? Aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. All uh, registered active voters will receive a ballot. Anything else, Rosemary? No, not for tonight. Does anybody have any questions for Rosemary? What 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 defines a an active voter versus someone who's just registered we have voters that are challenged that we believe are no longer living in johnson okay those will not be getting a ballot okay thanks say so, rosemary was there something you brought up that we should make a motion on that uh it skipped my mind but i thought that there was an item we need to address oh the grand list do we need to formally no, accept it? yes okay so I guess I would look for a motion to formally access, uh, uh, accept or approve the assessor's, uh, what is it? No suits or appeals. Yeah, no suits or appeals. I would so move. We have a motion, do we have a second? Is that with authorization to, for, the board, for the board chair to sign or are we all going in to sign this? I don't know what's required. 
uh, is this something that, like the grand list or like the warning, that needs everyone's signature? There's five spots on the paper to, for signatures. Okay. So not authorizing the board to check. Um, second. We have a motion to second. So the question, Rosemary, is is the board even authorized to have the chair sign that or does that require each individual? I think it's each individual. Okay. So everyone will have to make an effort to get in the office within a day or two. Any other discussion? Not seeing any. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. And is there anything else, Rosemary? No, I don't think so. Does anybody have anything else to ask Rosemary? Okay, uh, Brian, might as well get into your report. Okay, so uh, first thing we're gonna get into tonight is uh, about the salt truck. Uh, so we have contacted, uh, last month we talked about, you know, that we had some interest in pursuing a lighter uh, vehicle than what we were scheduled to uh, replace our old uh, International 4300 with. And, you know, we were interested in a little bit lighter four wheel drive vehicle that we thought that would alleviate some of the problems that we were kind of regularly experiencing with the existing truck and would might experience with a replacement. Um, you know, Brian Krause did his best effort that we wouldn't repeat the same problems, but it was still not, it was still not great. Hugh had some suggestions and some alternatives. We spoke to Clark's and uh, are pursuing that. The, the details from Clark's is they have agreed to let us out of the uh, purchase and sale agreement we signed for the International 4300 uh, if we would replace it with a different international truck that we purchased from Clark's. Uh, and International makes a model that they, that they regularly stock at Clark's uh, that is cheaper than what we were looking for and lighter weight than what we were looking for, but is heavier weight than our, um, what we were thinking about replacing it with, with uh, Ford Super Duty or uh, I don't remember the Chevy model, but it, a little heavier in between the two, but much lighter than, than what we were originally looking at. It is four wheel drive. Uh, it'll kind of meet all of our needs, but be a little bit heavier duty uh, than what we had originally scoped out. Um, you got a few details on that in your board packet, but you'll get a little bit more uh, and Hugh's here to speak to this. So I'm gonna turn it over to Hugh. Uh, offer a little more detail. Hello, everybody. On. Good evening, Hello. Hugh. Hello. Uh, yeah, so Brian and I have been back and forth with Clarks over the past couple of weeks since we last um, talked about this. Um, Brian's putting up here on the board. Um, <clears throat> Like he said, we've gotten them to let us out uh, without costing us any money. Um, to tweak a little bit of what Brian said, uh, International offers an equivalent to the Ford that I was starting to research um, and began to uh, propose as a replacement chassis. So when Russ brought that to our um, to us as an option, <clears throat> I'm more than happy with it. The, GVW specs are the same. Um, it's the same concept. It allows us to be in a four wheel drive vehicle. Um, so um, from my standpoint, it's a great um, option for us. Um, it's really just looking at things from a different perspective um, than my predecessor. So <clears throat> I feel like this is a pretty good, uh, it's an excellent thing for us. Um, I put together this little presentation tonight. Um, but essentially we're downgrading the size of our chassis uh, to a four wheel drive version. Um, it allows us to 
acquire a new vehicle that is um, basically better for us year round. It's going to do our uh, what we ask of it in the winter time just as well, um, if not better. And it allows us to add some new technology um, that will help us with our salt consumption. Um, and the whole thing ends up saving us about 21 grand in the end. So I think it's a win in about, you know, from nine different angles. Well, and it has a good longevity record, Hugh. Yeah, and it's the same seven year um, extended warranty that we put on all of our other new trucks. Mm -hmm. um, so we are pretty much, we're gonna be able to rest easy uh, with this truck. I, I looked at it from a lot of different um, ways when I was researching this concept. And, you know, we're, we were breaking rear ends because we were having, we had to put so much weight on the truck to give it adequate traction to do what we asked of it. I mean, that truck goes up hills. You know, we've paved all of these uh, road beginnings uh, that are super steep because that's the only way to keep them from um, washing away and that truck gets sent up every single one of them. So relying on a rear wheel drive truck to do it, uh, that's what's costing us. So um, by going to a four wheel drive truck and lessening the uh, gross vehicle weight uh, by several thousand pounds um, allows us to carry less because we aren't necessarily concerned with doing the whole salt route in one load. The, our uh, salt shed is in the middle of our uh, routes and so him coming back if he has to is not a big deal for, for us. So this allows us to run a lighter truck um, and it essentially there's a lot less strain on the drivetrain and um, it's a good fit for what we need. In this vehicle in the summertime, I included some pictures if you scroll through the packet, um, change the concept of the dump body, um, the dump body itself has dropped down sides. So <clears throat> in the summertime, the guys can load it with their small tools. Um, they can pull their uh, York rake around um, on the back roads. That's the unit that gets towed and accompanies the grader and that gets out rid of a lot of the uh, big rocks and stuff that the grader pulls out of the roads. Um, it allowed us to add a brine system to it. Um, Still, you know, saving uh, money for the uh, town. That's something, it's a minimal investment, but it's something that we can um, talk about down the road. I have a lot of theories on uh, what we're going to do with that. We're going to test the waters with it um, next spring a little bit without having to spend a bunch of money. Um, <clears throat> and I will create that uh, packet for the board uh, at some point so you guys can kind of see the benefits, but and kind of dispel some preconceived notions that folks may have about that. But um, so everything um, <clears throat> in this uh, new concept uh, makes 100% sense to me and uh, very happy with Clark's being able to work with us. Thank you, Hugh. Um, I believe when we left this, it was uh, with instructions to go see if they could uh, break the contract from the original truck the board had authorized uh, to for purchase. So I guess before we go much further, I would be looking for a motion to authorize uh, Brian and Hugh to continue with the purchase of this particular truck. And then we can enter into discussion. So move. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Okay. And Kim, I do see your hand up, but I'm going to first open it up the board members for questions and, and discussion. You. Go yeah. ahead, Mike. Uh, looking at the spec sheet, uh, that Ford that they spec'd, was that the same one that you were looking at also? Yeah, the Ford F600 <clears throat> um, is basically a Super Duty chassis that's has a GBW of 22,500, or excuse me, 22,000. And um, this would be International's equivalent chassis that actually has a 22,500 uh, GBW capability. So it's pretty much apples to apples. 
It seemed like a better truck in the long run, though. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't think it's any better than a Ford. You know, they're all they all toot their own horns. Um, True. But uh, it's, it's certainly it certainly allows us to get out of the contract and go with a chassis that I do not consider to be subpar. Now, initially, when you were talking about the Ford, I thought a fifteen thousand uh, dollar savings was mentioned. Uh, this has a twenty one thousand dollar savings. Mm -hmm. So, if that those numbers were uh, true true on the Ford, uh, we're six thousand dollars ahead with this one. Correct. I was throwing a ballpark out at the time. I didn't have my pencil sharpened. Okay. Uh, Very good. But anyway, twenty one thousand is is a good savings for the town. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your work, both you and Brian. So he Anyone? Go ahead. Um, just for clarification, all the highlighted areas in the in our packet here, that's things that you would um, I'm assuming you get to pick and choose sort of how you wanna how you wanna um, scoop it no. up. None of the highlighted stuff really had anything to do with me. I think that was Clark's trying to tell me how much better it was than the Ford. Okay. Um, the only thing that pertained to me that I made sure to add in there was Bluetooth capability um, for the operator because I've noticed that none of the vehicles in our fleet, including my pickup, have the ability to do hands-free talking, which I think is a huge safety issue when the guys already have to drive one-handed and run 13 levers. Um, so I made sure that that got put in that truck. Okay, thank you. So Hugh, the, the quote in the packet on page 10 is for 63,000. Mm -hmm. But on the uh, presentation before us, I, somewhere I saw some memo that said 86.9. It's the actual... So I don't have everything in front of me um, <clears throat> since I'm at home, but the original truck, that might be where you, oh, I think what you're seeing there with those numbers is <clears throat> 86.9 is net to the town once we've taken trade off. So the original truck deal would have cost 107,927 to the town after trade-in. And this truck is 86.9 after the same trade-in. So the 60 something you probably saw was the bare chassis before we even discussed like the Viking aspect of things. Yep, yeah, okay. Got it. The, the, what was included in your packet uh, has been developed a little bit more detail with uh, Hugh and Clarks and Viking. Um, it was the best of information I had available on Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thought developed over the weekend. <laughs> Any further bo board member comments? I I'm assuming that uh, getting a release from the contract is, a, is an important and our obligation under it, an important part of this as well as uh, getting a truck that would be equivalent to at least equivalent to what the one that you were looking at. I think that everyone was trying to play nicely together. You know, I was personally throwing a wrench into the gears of this situation. I, it wasn't Russ's fault that the new guy was coming in and thinking he had all sorts of great ideas. So we were all trying to get along and Russ was able to put this option on the table and I I'm, I'm not a diehard Ford guy or anything I I just want what's best for us so <clears throat> you know when he brought this to the table I was like oh I didn't even think of that I knew that you guys did have a chassis like that um, my concern right off the bat was is it going to fit in the bay we did measure it will fit in the bay so um I felt like between Brian and I and Russ, you know, we were somehow, uh, or we were luckily able to get this whole thing to come to flourishing. Thank you. Hmm? 
Any further board members or are we ready to open it up to the public? I just have one more question out of ignorance. Um, do we, would we be using this truck? Um, like, do we take the tandems off and use it during the summer? Is it so a year cut out? Truck or is it just a winter truck? No, these are all year round trucks. Um, yeah. But this one is definitely more so than uh, what we've previously done. The, <clears throat> the crew has spent a lot of time apparently using the foreman pickup to do a lot of tasks um, because their trucks weren't set up for summertime. Um, so this concept is going to start changing things. This will fill a need in the summer uh, at least as much as it does during the winter. In, in the summer, we really lacked for having more than one light, lighter duty truck. And so having this, that's, I mean, the last one fit in between the big tandems and the pickup, but this is a little bit closer to the pickup and it'll see quite a bit of use year round. Uh, because it's- yeah, I consider this a 12 month truck versus a five month truck. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Glad I asked. Okay, I'm sensing that that's the end of the board members questions. Uh, Brian, I know Kim's got her hand up and you may see some others. All right, Kim, go ahead. Um, yeah, it's probably obvious to other people, but I just wondered at the end of this paragraph, it has uh, ordering a chassis. And I just wondered how that fits into the above two paragraphs that talk about new trucks. Is, is, is the chassis what is being bought and not a whole truck? Uh, the chassis and the whole kit for the truck are actually supplied by two different companies, um, but they will coordinate with each other to deliver a final truck to us. Um, but the chassis is the part that's a little bit more time sensitive in this case. So we've got to put the order in for the chassis uh, with the, this is a common enough truck that Clark's regularly stocks them. So they've got one on order already. So if we kind of claim this one and agree to purchase it, they'll set it aside for us. Viking will get the, the equipment ready for it and by the time the chassis is delivered, they'll be able to fit the rest of the truck. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Uh, Beth, you had a question? Hey, go ahead, Beth. Um, thanks. My question is, is this going to, if you're switching around the way you're using the trucks, is there gonna be other um, financial impacts with operating costs. I assume the cost of the truck comes out of a capital or a reserve fund as opposed to an operational fund. And if you're switching from using the foreman truck, which is a more a lighter truck, uh, does that add expense to the operating budget? Or, um, well, I guess my question is general across all equipment, does this change operational spend? Thanks. Thank you, Beth. That's a really good question. Uh, I don't think this is going to have a huge impact on our uh, spending equipment or our spending for this. The replacement schedule we think is going to be the same replacement schedule we had before. Uh, it might mean that the lighter duty and cheaper pickup truck sees a little bit less use and this, this sees a little bit more use, but the like replacement schedule for this truck in our capital equipment plan is the same length as its uh, extended warranty. So- I got the capital side. Yeah, my question is actually more about the impact on, on operational budget. Well, uh, with, uh, with this on the, uh, that the extended warranty covers it, I think that the operation of this truck will, uh, won't have a huge impact on our cost. There will be a few things that are outside of warranty. Uh, this one will be a little bit more expensive to run than the uh, lighter duty pickup truck, but it'll be a lot less expensive to run than the truck that this is replacing or any of the tandems. Um, I hesitate to say that we're going to see a real cost savings, uh, but I think that 
I, I do not anticipate an increased operating cost. Does that align with your thoughts, Hugh? Yeah, definitely. And as I look back at the way things operated here prior to my arrival, <clears throat> I was seeing situations where the foreman was <clears throat> having to give the guys his pickup to go out and do a job that should take the full day. And he was saying, hey, I need to go meet with two residents uh, this afternoon. So you're gonna have to come back by X time so I can go to this. And to me, that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> yeah. um, I was told of two different instances where Brian took the bucket loader to meet with a resident because he didn't have a vehicle. And I just, I'm like, this, this doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. So we are definitely trying to tweak some things um, to make things make more sense. Awesome, thank you. I'm sorry about my lighting, it's horrible. All right, Greg, I've got you up next. Yeah, I like the idea of this truck and I think he was right on the money here because I believe, do the sides fall down on the body also, Brian or him? They do. Yeah, so, yep. you know, when you're taking signs in and out, um, first of all, you're going to reduce uh, any kind of back injury or workman's comp because that side folds down. You can just pull stuff right out of there. We have them in our business. It's a great idea. Um, and you, you know, sometimes you need a pickup in, a, in like a, truck like this so i'm really i think i'm all for this uh, the only concern i have is the wing i know uh, i don't think it should be used a lot that wing maybe certain little areas to clean up uh, but i'm not sure that top that truck size is uh, really perfect for a wing i think it's a lot of stress on it um I don't know much about the international four-wheel drives, but they make a decent truck. So, um, yeah, I think it's good. I think this is the right way to go. And the four-wheel drive is going to be handy, too. And actually, you'll save. I'm thinking this ought to be better fuel mileage in the winter than a bigger truck. And you probably won't need chains for it all the time. And it, it just really makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Thank you, Greg. Okay, thank you all. Uh, Brian, is there anyone else? I don't see anybody else. Okay. Go ahead, Nat. Um, how about a response to um, Greg's concern on the wing? Is uh, how, how necessary is the wing on this particular truck? Well, <clears throat> I, I don't like wings on small trucks. Um, but you talk to Russ, you talk to Viking, Never heard of a problem ever. You know, what else are they going to tell you? Um, I talked to Mark, who's going to run this truck full time, and he can't do that job without a wing. Um, luckily, that is a light duty um, aspect of that truck's assignment. You know, he's not pushing back banks, he's simply opening up these paved intersections you know, hog back, things like that, where having a wing's pretty, pretty pivotal. Um, you know, I did some research on how they handle it. My former employer had a Terra Star, which is the equivalent chassis with a wing on it. Um, you know, there's no statistics showing that it's, you know, an instant failure. You know, people are using them. Uh, the technology's changed a lot on these wings. No more cables. They've reduced the weight of the assembly, the lift assembly. Um, it's the shortest wing we can put on it, which is a nine footer. Um, so I am not concerned with it uh, based on how it's gonna be used. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I do have another public comment now, uh, Michelle. Oh. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Michelle. You'll have to unmute yourself. Hey, it's actually Mark French. I believe Mark. that the, that international, the frame is actually a lot thicker than the Fords and the Chevys or the Dodges, as far as a wing setup. 
And you guys are very fortunate to have Mark who would be very well with a wing on that chassis. Yeah, I, I, I trust Mark to have the, the kind of the right touch for this of, you know, it'll be a little, a little bit of a learning curve if it, if he does have to be more delicate with it, but I believe that Mark will be able to. Yeah, but you can look into with Clark's, but I'm 100% positive that's a double frame on that, I think, which is yeah, a lot yeah. stiffer than the Ford. So I wouldn't shy away from that. Okay. Uh, is the board prepared to vote? Sensing they are. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those, those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you, Hugh and Brian, for all the work and uh, go forward, purchase us a truck. Okay. Tree Thank board. Tree board opportunity or grant opportunity. Yep. So. Uh, let me get this. All right, so I'm going to rely on Sue for some assistance here, but our tree board has a, uh, an opportunity for a grant application uh, that will go to further kind of the, the landscape and trees in Johnson. So Sue, if you can fill us in with a little more detail. And it's not a grant. It does not involve uh, money. Um, the state stepped in and changed the tree warden statutes last November. And I had a meeting with UCF um, uh, Urban Community and Forestry. They don't know why the state did what they did with the statutes. And they would like, they're researching that now. They're looking for five towns to uh, be involved in a pilot project, a little bit like the Resilient Roads project last year, which we were involved with. Um, they're looking for volunteer time of a minimum of 50 hours, which is, I usually put more than that myself, never mind everybody else. So that's not a problem. <clears throat> they're just looking for the uh, select board to say, um, sure, we think this is a great idea. So their, their goal is to, uh, research ideas and methods and suggestions from different sized towns over the state, hopefully will be one of them. And then they will come up with um, sample tree ordinances. And the tree board's been talking about doing this uh, in terms of uh, protecting trees more than we've been able to in the past. We don't have time, we don't have the expertise. I think it's a great opportunity for them to do it for us. So the application is due day after tomorrow, and um, I will send it in with your support. I have a letter from Noel Dodge uh, with his support, and we'll see if uh, we get it. Thank you, Sue. Any board members got questions for Sue? If not, does the board want to formally approve? I guess I'm not totally clear on what, what this is. Um, this would be assistance from it's this. assistance from our tree board and whoever else wants to volunteer on that committee uh, to work with someone from the state probably Joanne Garten who's the person we worked for last uh, with last year on resilient roads and uh, they'll gather information from us on how we approach saving our trees or want to save our trees or protect our trees how we work and they'll write a plan. It's mainly a research gathering mission. Okay, and the, so what we get out of this is, is uh, uh, some suggestions for, for tree ordinances, is that? Yes. Okay, all right, yes. thanks. Okay. It doesn't obligate us to anything. Kyle? Um, so when you say our trees, do you mean town, town owned property? Right, public trees. Public trees, okay. The new statues took a lot of the um, authority of the wardens away. Uh, it now only covers trees that we planted, like the Main Street trees. It doesn't cover, uh, say, the trees on the green. 
in the past, uh, we've had, I want to be nice about this. We've had uh, people in authority who have felt that the best thing to do with trees is cut them down, and they did a lot. And then we turn around and spend money to plant them again. Uh, we're looking at saving those trees before that happens, or at least being able to save those trees before that happens. <laughs> so is there some overlap between town and village here that would need to be addressed? I mean, for instance, the village green trees, the trees on Main Street, um, I would think they might be part of the Main Street Village project. They were part of the village project. Uh, I don't know. UCF only asked for select board input. They didn't ask for, um, uh, she's all for it, by the way. That's cool. <laughs> she's, she attends every Zoom meeting. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about the village. The fact is the Main Street trees are in the state right away. So we usually go through the village to deal with the state on that. Yeah. However, the fact that we planted them means that the tree warden has authority over them. Okay. Well, that's a question I would think um, as we look towards um, um, uh, adopting ordinances that that might be something we would need to get a little more clearly on, but. Right, we, we would not, um, if this happens, uh, we would not be addressing that question for a year. They figure it'll be a year before they get results. Sure, cool. So does this, uh, so this is Doug, is it, are you going to take a look at what our urban trees are, where they are, what their needs are? Is that what this is about or? or... Oh no, we did that five years ago. Okay, so, yeah. so, so what are you going to do differently? So you, you know what you have and you want to make an ordinance or, or you want to determine how to go into the future with what we have? How to go into a future and improve upon what we have. In terms of say, say we want to, um, what pops to mind is, is the trees on the green. Uh, say we want to designate those old maples there um, as special trees that are meaningful to the town and and we absolutely want nothing to happen to those trees, we would be able to do that. It's a matter of uh, preservation. Okay, and, and, and I gather preservation in the sense of who has controls and who, who addresses their preservation or not, or their disappearance. It would mean, for example, uh, if road crew wanted to cut down a tree because um, for whatever reason, uh, the tree warden would be able to say, no, we have, we have designated that tree saved and there would have to be a hearing over it. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm being vague. Um, the state's been vague. The whole point is they need more information from people in order to draft uh, ordinances around this. Okay, any further board members? Or is it the board's pleasure to have a letter drafted in support of the, the tree board or the tree board's uh, request. Yes. Move we give a letter of uh, uh, what'd you call it, uh, Eric? Uh, I don't remember what I did say. A request. Letter of support? Let, yeah, there you go. Letter of support. Went right out of my head. I'll second that. And would that need board signature or can we just have Brian sign it and give it, provide it for you, Sue? I'm sure Brian's signature would be fine. Just on behalf of the select board. Sure. Okay. Any further discussion? Not seeing any from board members. Brian, is there any uh, public members that want to speak to this? So uh, if you've got questions, please raise your hand. Um, remember, you can do that with the button underneath the participants tab. But no, I don't see any public comment. With that, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Those opposed? The ayes have it. And uh, I'm guessing Brian will probably draft something for you tomorrow. Yep. Great. Okay. Thank you, yeah, thank you Sue. Uh, the next item I asked Brian put on the agenda uh, is sort of unprecedented for at least a number of years. We've had uh, a situation where we have four people running for two slots on the select board. And I want to just pose the question to the full board. Would you like to, uh, as a board host, a uh, candidate's night or debate. Uh, obviously, I think we should get a, a moderator to uh, run the meet, run the debate. But uh, what's the board's thoughts? I think it's a great idea. Why not? It's a great way to get people to know who they're going to vote for. Hey, anyone else? Any thoughts? Okay, I'm, I'm not, is there anyone against it? I guess that's what I should say. And we'll just try to figure out sometime we can set up when all four candidates be available and uh, the select board can host it and we'll find a moderator to uh, uh, run it. Eric, would we be um, ask, would we be asking the questions, or were the public how, who where are the questions coming from? The way I would see it, we would have no more participation than anybody else from the public, or any less. Uh, the main purpose is uh, for the candidates. The only thing we would do is be hosting it, setting it up for. Them. Would re attendance be required? Our attendance. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I guess not. If you got something better to do, <laughs> <laughs> you're lame duck. <laughs> that wouldn't have anything to do with it, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, you 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 figure you don't have to get involved anymore because you're on your way out, don't you? Oh no, I mean I'm I'm not running, but I'm still a voter. That's true. Matt, did you have something? Yeah, I just want to make sure, you know, uh, that we would be as a board collectively um, hands off with it and let the moderator kind of take it. I, I, I would want to be careful about being accused of putting our finger on the scale. Yeah, that, that's why I don't think we should be uh, running the meeting and, and allow a moderator to do it. Okay. We'll see if we can put something together. Uh, next item is the town meeting and ballot advertising. Oh, uh, I'm just going to loop back to the previous one about the candidates night. Uh, I've got two things I want to clear up. I think I've got everybody's email, but Michelle, I'm not sure if I have your email. So if you, I'll, I'll check, but I, I might need some help getting a hold of, of of you, Michelle. Um, but I'm in the office tomorrow, so call down to town hall and we'll work it out. Um, the other one, are we envisioning this as a an additional meeting or are you thinking of this as part of one of our informational meetings? I think it should be completely separate because uh, I think it would take, or it could take a little bit of time when you got four candidates. Yeah. Okay, so I will be in touch with the uh, w with the candidates, and we'll set up a moderator and uh, and make arrangements. Uh, Kim has a question, so if, if the board's all set, yeah, go ahead. Okay, Kim. Quick, easy one. Who are the four candidates? It is uh, Beth Foy and Michelle French are running for the three-year seat that's up, and uh, Sophia Berard and Eben Patch are running for the two-year seat that's up. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Right. Town meeting. Uh, 
next one up is town meeting and ballot advertising. So uh, we've got our two regular informational meetings scheduled, uh, but there's a lot we can do between now and then for kind of getting the word out and uh, kind of drumming up interest. The town report will go up on the website first. So probably about that time or maybe earlier uh, will be a good time for us to start making kind of collectively making posts on Front Porch Forum, Facebook and the like kind of directing people's attention. Um, is there any other discussion items or questions or anything specific we wanna get into? Can we go through the crucial dates? Um, so what, what, what day would you expect that that town report would be available on the web? Do you know? I'm gonna unmute Rosemary here to, to assist. That's all we'll talk about. Like, when will ballots go out? When should they be? Yeah, all that sort of thing. Um, the town report should go on the website this week. I sent it to Susan to put to post. And ballots will probably go out next week. You don't have any early next week, late next week, just? Probably around the 10th. Around the 10th, about the 10th, we'll say. And then any other crucial dates? There's no registration deadline, obviously. No. Um, How about reports in the mail, Rosemary? That'll be the third week of February. Geez, that, kind of, that seems kind of late. I know. Is that later than usual? No. Yeah, it's usually about a week before town meeting. Okay. Is there, are we directing people to the village, to the village town merger report? I know that's in the, can that be a separate thing as well as being in the town report? It's already on, that's already on the website, I believe. Yep, it, it is already up on the website. Uh, and we've made one post specific to the uh, merger report. We can make more. Yeah, I would suggest there be several, you know. That, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, th I think now that we've, with the town report, when that goes up, that'll be another good opportunity to kind of loop in and, and remind people, hey, go read the town report and read the merger report, uh, kind of keep directing attention there. Uh, to the town website for those, for that information. People still have the option to vote in person on March 2nd, correct? Yes. Yep. And one thing I'm not clear on, and I think others might be confused too, usually on election day, if we were going to vote in person, we'd go to the school. I okay. guess we're not going to do that this year. Um, at the town office. So we'll have to, um, we'll want to just be clear with that on our communications unless I'm just kind of, to me, that's a confusing point. Maybe that's just my yeah. muddled brain. Yeah. Okay, good information. I, I think that the, um, what Nat asked for in terms of the, the crucial dates, we ought to do a posting on these crucial dates so people have an understanding and can be looking for those. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe have a sign. Can we? Have, I'm sorry. Can we just have a, a sign at the school um, on town meeting day that says the elections are at the town office? I, again, if I'm, if this is just me that's <laughs> finds that um, a potential point of confusion, then forget it. But I expect to allow it. Sorry, I'm sorry. I cut you off, Rosemary. Can you? We probably put something close to the sidewalk down by the, the gate or some place at the pull off or something. If we put our sandwich board out there that said yeah. election at town office. Thank you. I'm sorry, Kyle, I didn't mean to talk over you. Thank you. Um, uh, the informational meetings are another, the two mm. informational meetings are very important dates. Mm -hmm. Could you just say them out loud again, Brian, here? It is. Uh, February 22nd, which is, excuse me, February 23rd, which is Tuesday at 7, 
and February 27th at, uh, what time is that one? 2 p.m. At 2 p.m., thank you. <clears throat> yes, 2 p.m. Okay, uh, if there's no further board comments, I know there's, uh, Jasmine has one from the public. All right, go ahead, Jasmine. My question got answered. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, you had allotted 30 minutes to this. Have we got some more discussion? Or is... No, I, I just thought that, uh, you know, if there was anything we wanted to, there was some discussion about, um, you know, whether we wanted to get into specifics or anything at our regular meetings or remind people, but we've kind of done that. Um, so no, uh, okay. I don't think we need the 30 minutes. And any board members have further comments on this particular item? So I, I just have one comment. Um, Ryan, are you gonna be responsible for getting all these posts out on every channel? It would be great if I can get some assistance and some follow-up. I can make all these posts, but I think getting it amplified and repeated uh, will be very helpful. Mm -hmm. So look for my post to go out uh, in the next day or two, and then you know, kind of amplify and repeat over the next couple weeks uh, so that we really get the message out there and we really drive people to you know, you can read the reports online first and, and the locations and links that they need to read the reports online uh, and when to look for ballots and the report, the physical copy of the report in the mailbox. I think uh, we also ought to send all of that to the newspaper because some seniors may not have access to the internet and uh, make it available. Obviously, they'll get the town report in the mail, but uh, at least uh, make all those dates known when to expect informational meetings and stuff like that. That's good. We've got our local beat reporter on the call tonight. So. And we certainly do. I hope she wrote, wrote down all those dates and times. <laughs> we'll be, Sue and I, we'll, we'll be in touch tomorrow about the letter of support. So if you need anything about dates, we can take care of that then too. Okay. Uh, is, can I ask you a question? Go ahead, Doug. I, I'm wondering, Brian, is, do you think that it'd be appropriate to, uh, in your posting, to, to say that there is a, not that there's a timing problem, but that the, the ballots will be available before uh, people who have received the paper copy and please read this on, you know, please review the material either online or in person before voting? Yeah, I think I can say, I think I can say that much. You know, I, I think that we can say, you know, direct people to, to the, uh, the online component and, and really kind of reinforce that, yeah, you'll, you'll have the ballot first. Uh, so try, try and direct people there uh, to the electronic copy. Thank you. If there's no further board, comments, uh, I believe Kim's hand was up. Okay, Kim, go ahead. Thanks, just clarifying again. Um, so if I heard correctly, uh, there's an informational meeting on the 23rd, which is a Tuesday? Yes. And the 27th, which is a Saturday? Yep. And then people are talking about a town meeting, but there really isn't a town meeting, is there? There's just a vote on the 2nd of March. True. Correct. Okay, thank you. Although we should probably mention and maybe close uh, with Mark Woodward. He is talking about having, still doing his pizzas in the uh, pizza oven and making them available for people to come by and get them. Jasmine shaking her head. Oh, maybe he's changed his mind then yeah i think we're just gonna nix it for this year oh okay okay yeah. take that i take that back 
it, it might change. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, but as of right now, I don't think we're going to do it. Okay. Forget Thank I said anything. You, I hope so. Okay. If there's no further discussion on that item, we'll move on to the addition of the warning page yep. discussion. So the uh, warning page that was printed uh, that you all signed was printed from an earlier copy of the budget. Uh, I went ahead and made a substitution uh, before it went to the printers with the correct budget numbers on it. Uh, so we're all set, that's been fixed. Okay. I wanted the board to be aware. But I think we have to formally vote because the warning that we uh, approved was uh, about a, almost a thousand dollars less than the actual warning uh, number that we should have for our budget. And it's the amount to be raised by taxes. Yeah. So I guess I would look for a, a motion to approve the substitute with the correct budget number. Don't have a lot of choice, do we? <laughs> no. Well, and, and to be clear, this is the budget number that you did approve. The number oh. that was written on the oh. warning was the incorrect number. So then why do we need a motion? Because the warning- because you, you did vote separately to approve the warning. Okay, all right, all right. And the warning and the budget number didn't match. Uh, but when we reviewed the budget, that's only ever been the, the, the one number since for the last couple of drafts, it's just that the, the warning was written kind of concurrently with the budget. And, and so it had a slightly older number on it. If this was in a regular town meeting format, uh, Dave would require us to go by the printed warning that we approved. So I, th I think it just cleans it up if we approve a modified warning with that small change. So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah, motion, second. Any discussion? So do we have to re-sign or no? You said you fixed it. Okay. Nope. It was uh, the sign, the page we signed was the second page. So oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Any, yeah. Further, any further discussion? I, I was just going to say again, you approved the budget. This is the same number on what you approved for the budget. Uh, it, it's there's been no changes to it. Yep. Okay. If there's no further discussion, take it up to the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you. And Kyle, you had some an item on video links. Oh yeah, I just wanted to um, request that we add the um, recording links to our meeting minutes on the meeting minute page of our of the website. So that's just super easy for people just to click right on it. So are you thinking the the video link like at the top of the web page, straight over to the GMA TV, not for individual meetings or? Uh, are you thinking a video link for each individual meeting? Yeah, for the individual meetings. Okay. That correspond with the minutes. Is that a huge uh, lift to do that? I don't think it's going to be too hard. Uh, they're not done at necessarily at the same time, uh, but I don't see any reason why we can't kind of reorganize it to make sure that the minutes and the video link appear next to each other, I don't think that's gonna to be too difficult. So uh, who, would, who would do this? I'm hoping that Susan will be able to take care of it, uh, but I'll probably have to assist her. Uh, I'll, I'll probably have to figure it out myself and assist her with it. Okay. I assume this is not retroactive minutes. This is yeah. going forward. Yeah, if I think we, we wanted to do it retroactively, I would 
I don't think it'll be a huge lift, but I think it will be time consuming. So I would say that if we want to start adding it in for past minutes, we can do that, but give us some time to fill those in. Uh, if that's part of the request. And retroactively, they could go, anybody could go see all of them at the uh, Green Mountain access. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure going forward. But if you have time on your hands and can go back, then that's, that's great too. But I, I guess my request was going forward. Okay. On that topic, um, the, uh, Every, every set of meeting minutes in that archive says draft or unapproved. Um, and I'm wondering if moving forward, we could somehow clean that up a little bit. It's a small little thing, but. I've noticed that. So the question I have is sometimes we change the meeting minutes. Are the meeting minutes posted right. with our changes or are they the original draft? If Donna sends it out, uh, it gets the updates get posted. Uh, so as long as it comes from Donna, it comes through our regular workflow, and I'm confident that they go up that way. And I don't think they'd come in any other way. But why do they always have uh, spelled out as draft? I think it's because of the way our workflow works uh, and the way we've been doing things that when Donna sends them to us, they get up on the website. Donna doesn't send us approved minutes. So I think that's where that's kind of falling down is that when we get things through certain channels, it goes up on the website and it's pretty easy to manage. If it comes in in an unusual way, uh, that is not necessarily harder, but it, it's not automatic. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's something to look at then. Yeah, I, I think I don't think that's uh, too much of an ask for us to to look at changing. Thanks. Okay. I think uh, Diana has a question. Yep. Okay, Diana. I haven't checked all of the different types of minutes, but I'm um, successfully able to view all of the town select board agendas and minutes online. However, I'm noticing that the law enforcement committee meeting minutes aren't viewable from the website. I know that they're being taken and we're approving them, but I can't find them on the website. And I, I just w wanted to mention that in case it applies to other committees as well. I'll take a look at that. Um, yeah, when we added the racial justice committee and law enforcement to the website, we had some technical problems that reset a few things for the Racial Justice Committee. And I know those were fixed and uh, I was not aware of a similar problem with the Law Enforcement Study Committee. So uh, yeah, my mind goes to those were created at the same time and we started having problems with the website at that time. Mm -hmm. So it's probably the same problem and we just didn't notice that that problem also affected the law enforcement. Right. I mostly am keeping notes for my own purposes, but I wanna make sure that we're 100% compliant with um, you know, the open meeting law and the intent of it. Yep, so I'll, I'll circle back and, and look at uh, why those might not be visible and, and what's going on. Uh, again, thankfully we fixed it for the Racial Justice Committee. So if it's the same problem, it shouldn't be too hard to fix. Great, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for bringing it up. Okay, uh, if there's no further comments from the, from the public, that's the last item I'm showing on our agenda, unless uh, somebody had something else they wanted to bring up. And not seeing anyone rise, so we'll uh, call the meeting adjourned at 8.04. Do have a, a hand up. Oh, okay. Well, let's recognize Rick then. Okay, go ahead, Rick. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I, I kind of got lost on the uh, participant or raise hand or something. I'm glad, thank you for giving me a minute there. Okay, so Racial Justice Committee met 
on uh, January 27th to ratify actions that were taken on the January 7th meeting because of a confusion at, of a last minute change of the Zoom ID number. Uh, there were all the participants were in the Brian Story meeting room, the number that we're at tonight. And when Eric Hutchins, who is hosting the meeting, logged on, he was given a different Zoom ID number, which took us about 20 minutes to figure out what went wrong. And we went ahead with the meeting, but there was the possibility because of that technicality that it might be subject to an open meeting law violation. So we scheduled the special meeting for January 27th to ratify. And so I guess this is, um, this is the first time. So I'm bringing um, a recommendation from the Racial Justice Committee from January 7th. And I don't know if, if am I supposed to bring them to select board meeting? Um, am I supposed to email them? I'm not really sure that the chain of communication. So that's why I'm addressing it here under the uh, sort of other business since they are not, um, how to say it, their recommendations. Um, so, yeah, I would say, Rick, if it seems to be town only or village only uh, business, then you should only probably uh, at least direct it to them, either Meredith or Brian. Uh, it probably would be good for us to each be CC'd on it, okay. however. Okay. Um, can I just follow through? I told the, the committee that I would I would uh, express their recommendations at the next meeting because I thought that was probably the way to go. Do you have a minute? Yes. And there's only ahead. one for the town. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, the recommendation was town of Johnson and village trustees um, add the Johnson inclusivity statement prominently to the website and. Um, wherever possible to town communication, publications, and advertisements. Uh, again, uh, non-binding, a rec recommendation. Um, but I did have some questions and it came up in the course of the public discussion. One was uh, about funding for educational opportunities and speakers, which are part of the five point plan. Um, we didn't really think that there would be funding available because we, we don't. Um, but the question came up later, uh, could the committee actually apply for grants for speaker fees and things like that? Or would you rather that the board get a recommendation and then act on it through your uh, either select, well, speaking to your uh, group, should it go through the select board? for approval for funds for speakers, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, I believe you would not have an authority as a committee to uh, on your own go out for a, a, a grant request. It would have to be sanctioned by the select board or the trustees. Okay, good. In the same Thank fashion, you. like uh, Sue Lovering was here tonight asking the town support on a, a grant or requesting help with the state, but that's not unusual that a lot of boards and commissions come to the select board and uh, we usually uh, sanction those uh, requests going forward. Okay. Um, and then um, I would just like to uh, make a note um, that uh, I'd like to really thank uh, the select board for providing clarity. This, this town meeting is gonna be like no other town meeting, very unique, uh, very specific to the, the time that we're in. And I just really wanna thank the, the board for discussing and planning and publicizing. And I like that term, I think maybe it was Nat or Doug who talked about um, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, crucial days, crucial dates. And, um, and getting the information related to town meeting out to the public in a very clear and forthright manner. Thank you. Well, Rick, I would just say that all of our town meetings are unique, but thank you.
Yeah, yeah. Well, they are. But I was saying related to this specific time that we're in COVID. This will be something that people will tell their children and their grandchildren. Um, so thank you. Um, and then um, I actually have to speak to Brian about something because in the middle of my conversation, I just got um, an email from Eric Hutchins and uh, the same thing happened. Um, I just got this, I just got this email minutes ago. Um, the town of the Brian Story meeting room that we're in right now that we all signed in, I won't post those numbers, although they are public. Um, we got switched again. And we are warned for a meeting on Thursday night at six o'clock and Boy, um, I I don't know how unless we change the. Uh, we can uh, take care of it tomorrow, Rick. Give me a call okay. at uh, at town hall in the morning. And, okay. Um, it, we can it's that switch. Uh, I'll get with Eric another night uh, to go over how he can do it. Uh, so we can take care of it in the future, but I'll, we don't. I'll we don't have to change the the warning, the agendas, because I've already posted them in in the two no, places. No, they, they've already gone out. I don't want to change them. Change okay. them now, so that's so you'll be able for folks. You'll be able to switch the uh, meeting room number back to the original. I believe so. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh boy, because <laughs> this other part was, uh, you know, it was thorough. Yeah. Um, Okay, thank you. Okay, and again, uh, I'll sign off. Thank you. Good job tonight. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Is Diana's hand up from before? Uh, no, I think that's another one. So uh, go ahead, Diana. Yeah, I don't think her hand ever came down from last time. Okay. Okay. I might be mistaken, but. Okay. Uh, there's no further business. It's 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 um the it's a new hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, go yeah. ahead. Please. I'm so sorry. I know you're anxious to get out of here at a prompt hour, but um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to express my um, concern and frustration about our broadband situation in town. Um, you know, I'm just sitting here hearing about you know every fifth word dropout, and it makes it almost impossible to do this kind of business. And I was on Zoom meetings Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night last week with the same similar frustration. I had to resort to using my phone. And I just feel like we prematurely disbanded the broadband committee. I know we have this municipal union district, but if this is you know, this bad for me, it's gotta be equally bad for other people in town. And we need something faster than that fiber optic system is gonna happen. You know, I've tried to jump through the hoops on my own with the Department of Public mm -hmm. Service. I've done work with Consolidated, I've done work with Comcast, and I just feel so marginalized and incapable of um, making my situation improve. And I feel like I'm pretty well versed in the different options that I have, and I've you know gone through the appropriate channels. And it is just so incredibly frustrating to not be able to do something as essential to our daily life as a Zoom meeting. I think that as this town gets um, funding for COVID issues, I really would encourage you to consider making some kind of grants available for people. I know we have six residents up on our road that all appealed to Comcast to try to get service extended for a half a mile. And we were thwarted. You know, we, we just really need the town to advocate for its people and to help make something happen when the individual people can't make it happen on their own faster than this municipal union thing is gonna happen. Cause this is the kind of thing that we needed you know, a long time ago. So I'm sorry to make the meeting go long, but I just had to express that. Um, that's that's a good valid concern. And we do have some people that have been working very hard on this and meeting regularly. And I'm not sure if Doug wants to uh, address some of those things. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same or worse position than Diana. And uh, um, we are, the uh, municipal broadband committee is not going to bring in the millions of dollars that's necessary for um, a to bring fiber to the last mile. Um, there are other things that are possibly out there. Uh, 
Elon Musk and, and Starlink is, is, is a potential. Uh, the, we have, uh, they had an RDOF auction that consolidated and Starlink won for the un and underserved areas. And uh, nobody is going to move to help uh, people in our position uh, for a while. It's a huge infrastructure problem. VTEL, uh, um, you know, I personally had them at my house. Uh, they were going to do, uh, uh, do it by towers. And uh, I, they said, oh, you have the signal. Twice they had the signal, then the technician and it disappears. You know, we have been, the rural areas are neglected, uh, whether we're in Kansas or Nebraska. And uh, your frustration, you know, needs to be known, but it's, we're finally getting attention. What you need is money out of Washington, D.C., because no one in the regular capitalist system is going to bring this to the last mile because they cannot afford to. They need an REC, rural electrification type of project. And without that, uh, I, I would say that your focus on abandoning that abandoning broadband committee here was a step forward. It was not a step backwards. And uh, our local community has none of the resources necessary for this. The community, the communication union districts are, have no, they wouldn't exist if we had taxing authority because the town would not be putting its taxing authority online and taxing people for extending this. They would not add the millions and millions of dollars necessary to do this and bring that forward. So uh, we are where we are. The, ex the pandemic has put an exclamation mark on this, as I said a number of times, because all of a sudden something that a lot of people in this town have been campaigning for became universally self-evident. But money and time, you don't even have the number of technicians necessary to, to do the make ready work. The co-op is not, the co-op is the least, Vermont Electric Co-op that is, is the least uh, co-op in favor of move, helping you get broadband to your community, to your home. So you, the frustration is there. It ought to be there, but the solution doesn't get brought by frustration. And with that, unless we got any further comments, let's show us adjourn it. 817. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. Good night. Good night. Good night.